tavern Run along lonely run My heart was so heavy In sin I sank low Then I heard about Jesus What a wonderful love I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out through his saving power Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by his wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. Like a bird out of prison that's taken its flight. Like, like the blind man that God gave back his sight. Like, like a poor, poor wretched beggar who found fortune and fame. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his holy name. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by his wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. Thank God I am free. World of sin, washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Take your Bible this morning for our scripture reading, if you would, please. <clears throat> psalm 100, the 100th Psalm. Psalm 100, just five verses in this psalm, and so I think we'll just read it in unison together this morning. Psalm 100. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. Let's begin together on verse number one. Ready? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And let's pray together. <clears throat> Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful music today and for the good singing from the people of God. It's good to sing praises to your name. It's wonderful to to hear your people lift their voice to you. And I pray, Lord, that you've been pleased with our songs of praise to you this morning. And Lord, we're asking you now that you would bless the special as it is sung this morning. And Lord, that you would continue to prepare our hearts, that we'd be ready to receive the truth from your word today. Lord, we want our hearts to be good soil that the word of God can fall into and bring forth fruit in our lives. And so, Lord, help us to focus and give you our undivided attention this morning. And bless the special now to that end. In Jesus' name, amen. Since I started for the 
kingdom since my life he controls since i gave my heart to jesus the longer i serve him the sweeter he grows the longer i serve him the sweeter he grows the more that i love him more love he bestows each day is like heaven my heart overflows grace he bestows every day my way gets brighter the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows the more Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Amen. <clears throat> Now, Father, we bow before you in prayer as we come to open up your word today. Lord, I'm asking for your help as I bring this message this morning, and I'm asking for you to help each one of the people as they listen this morning, both here in the auditorium and by way of the internet. Lord, I pray that you would quiet our hearts and still our minds, and don't allow us to be thinking of other things that would Keep us from receiving the truth and the message you have for us today. Lord, I believe that you would have us as Christians to not just limit our thanksgiving to one day or one season of the year, but we're to be thankful at all times. And I pray that you would help us today to determine that we will be a thankful people, not just in November but all year round. We love you and we pray you'll speak to our hearts this morning through your word. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. <clears throat> Someone has said when it comes to Thanksgiving, there's two categories of people. Those who take things for granted and those who take things with gratitude. And I want to be in the crowd that takes things with gratitude and not take things for granted i want to have the gratitude attitude as patch the pirate would say the bible says here in psalm 100 we're to enter into his gates with thanksgiving if anybody ought to be thankful it ought to be god's people and we're to enter into his presence when we enter his gates we're entering into his presence with thanksgiving and <clears throat> The sign out front we had put out was, uh, if we'll be thankful, we will be thankful. And a lot of times the reason we're not thankful as we ought to be is we don't take time to think. Let me give you something to think about. More than 660 million people in the world live on less than $2 a day. More than 385 million people in the world live on one dollar or less a day. 1.4 million children die each year from a lack of access to safe drinking water and adequate sanitation. There are 870 million people in the world that do not have enough food to eat. Here's something to think about. 
a quarter of all human beings, that's about 1.6 billion, live without electricity. Aren't you glad for electricity? Preventable diseases, <clears throat> just as diarrhea and pneumonia, take the lives of 2 million children a year because they're too poor to afford proper treatment. An estimated 130 million people of the world, 15 to 24 years of age, cannot read or write. About 2.5 billion people in the world do not have access to adequate sanitation. That's about two-fifths of the world's population. Ask Brother Yoder when he was in Uganda and they showed him where the bathroom was. In a little, little rectangular hole in the floor. That's it. Aren't you glad for sanitation? Hmm? Aren't you glad for indoor plumbing? When you hear some of those statistics, you ask yourself now, what was I complaining about? What was I, what was I not being very grateful for? Thanksgiving. Be ye thankful, the Bible says. I think we would, if we would just stop to think a little bit, we'd thank Him for our senses. The ability to, to touch and see and hear and feel and smell. I think we'd thank Him for the roof over our head and for food in the cupboard. I think we'd thank Him for the ability to hear the birds sing, to see the blue sky, to see the smile of a friend. I think if we thought a little bit, we'd thank Him for family, we'd thank Him for children, thank Him for the fellowship of other Christians. There's much to be thankful for. Now the word thanks, or synonyms of it, are mentioned over 150 times in the Bible. That may not seem like a lot until you compare it to other words. The word, the word adultery is mentioned 64 times. Stealing, 21 times. Covetousness, 41 times. Idolatry, 111 times. But in those 150 times that thanks or thanksgiving or thankfulness is used, we're exhorted to give thanks. Our people are giving thanks. Our people are being rebuked for not giving thanks. But the Bible says we ought to be thankful. In fact, I want you to look at a verse of Scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Would you look there with me? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 in the New Testament. You go Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, you'll hit 1 Thessalonians and look at chapter 5 with me, please. A familiar verse to many of you this morning, but it's verse number 18. I want you to notice what the Bible says today. It says, In everything, do what, church? Give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Why? This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So it is no doubt in our mind, is there, that it's God's will that we give thanks. It's God's will that we be a thankful people and not a complaining people. Now notice, uh, what, you, what you don't often see is when it says give thanks, it's in a continual sense. It's not just give thanks and be done with it. It is in everything be giving and giving and giving, and giving, and keep on giving thanks. Don't just give thanks once and stop. Go and give thanks three times and stop. It's a continual, it's much like prayer when it says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Those are all in the continual sense. It's not you ask one time. and you, it, It's ask and ask and ask and keep on asking. And seek and seek and seek and keep on seeking. So here, it's, Give thanks and give thanks and give thanks and keep on giving thanks. In what? Everything. Now, he didn't say 
for everything. But He did say in everything. We are always to be giving thanks. Not to grumble, not to groan, not to complain about what God has given to us. Not rendering thanks to God is an occasional thing that we do. Well, it is thanksgiving. So I guess I'll be thankful. You see? It's, it's a continual giving thanks. In other words, it's a way of life. It's the way we're supposed to live as believers. It's not the suggestion of God. It's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and me. And so we're to be always wanting to give thanks. I read about a young Scottish boy, young man, actually made the move from home for the first time and was getting himself established in another town far enough away that his mother could not visit, but she had to phone him to see if he was okay. So she was worrying about him, and so she called him to see how he's doing. And he said, well, I'm fine, mother, but there's some very unthankful and unhappy people that live in the apartment building I'm in. Well, she got a little concerned. She said, what do you mean? How are they unthankful and unhappy? Well, her son said, it sounds like the woman above, above, who lives above me lays on the floor and sobs a great deal. And then, the, man and the, uh, the, the woman and her child below me always seem to be yelling. And the man who lives next to me seems to always be beating his head against the wall. Often for long periods of time. Well, mom was shocked. And she said, son, you need to not associate with those people in any way. You need to stay away from them. He said, oh, don't worry, mom. I don't have anything to do with them. I just stay in my apartment and continue to practice my bagpipes. You wondered where that was going, didn't you? Be thankful. Be thankful. There's several things I want to draw our attention to this morning about being thankful. And the first one is in 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 15. Would you look there with me, please? 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 15. And it's not what I want. That might be it. Hold on. Don't, don't go anywhere. I think it's 2 Corinthians. Let's see. It is. It's 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Would you look at 2 Corinthians? Notice the Bible says, Paul writes here in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Thanks be unto God for His what, church? Unspeakable gift. What is the unspeakable gift that He refers to? Yeah, Jesus Christ. It's, it's Jesus Christ with, and by the way, it's in Christ that we get the unspeakable gift of salvation. It's in Christ that we get the gift of eternal life. And so we, we receive that gift through Jesus Christ. And here, Paul and, and, and with the Holy Spirit, trying to, trying to understand how can I convey this? How can I, what, what word can I use to get people to understand how wonderful and how amazing and how spectacular and how incredible this salvation really is? And he just comes up with the word unspeakable. It's just uh, indescribable, if you will. In Hebrews, he calls it so great salvation. In Isaiah, he calls it unbelievable. Isaiah says, who hath believed our report? <laughs> Who's going to believe this? That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, would come to earth and, and live a perfect sinless life and then go to the cross and take the sins of mankind on Himself and say, God, punish me instead of sinful man. Who's going to believe that? That He died, He was buried, and three days later He rose from the dead. And now He's able to save all those that come unto God by Him. That's unbelievable. Man would never think that up. All man-made religions 
will talk about how you ought to die for God. It's only Christianity that says you have a God that died for you. You have a God that died in your place. That's unbelievable. That's great salvation. That's indescribable salvation. That's unbelievable salvation. It's incredible. I like what the songwriter said when he said, Suffer a sinner whose heart overflows, loving his Savior to tell what he knows. Once more to tell it, would I embrace, I'm only a sinner saved by grace. I like the other song that says, I'll sing it, I'll shout it wherever I go. I want all to hear it. I want all to know the joy of salvation that makes my heart glow, for I've been born again. And I'm so glad to tell you today that I know that I'm saved. I'm so glad to tell you today I have that so great salvation. Do you have it? Have you experienced that in your life? Can you, would you testify today that I have experienced the salvation that's in Jesus Christ? When God said the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, have you had a time when you accepted Him as your Savior? When you embraced Him and said, I believe you died for my sin? That you were buried and you rose again the third day in Jesus? I'm asking you to be my Savior. To forgive my sin. To give me the gift of eternal life. Oh, my friend, thank God for salvation. When I think of the billions in this world, and I said billions, that have never heard of Jesus Christ. And I got to hear about it. I heard, I heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Many have never heard those words. If you have never received Him as your Savior, receive Him today. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. And receive Him today as your Savior. Salvation. So I'm thankful for the salvation I have in the Lord. Then, I'd like you to look at Psalm 65. Would you go back to the Psalms? We started off in Psalm 100. Just go back a little bit from there to Psalm 65. Again, David pens the words. <clears throat> He says in verse 1, Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. You notice what he called God here? O thou that hearest prayer. When's the last time you just thank God that he, heard, that he hears prayer? That he hears your prayers. Not, not that you can pray. And there's a great difference between saying prayers and praying. We're not talking here about saying your prayers. We're not talking about reading a prayer from a book. We're talking here about praying to where you know God hears when you pray. This is, he's saying, you're the God who hears when we pray. We talk in Sunday school this morning about the, the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel and, and they cried out for most of the day to their God, Baal, small g. And they even cut themselves. And they cried out and they jumped up and down on their sacrifice trying to get His attention. But there was nobody to hear. And there was nobody to see. Because there's only one God that hears prayer. And that's our God. He's the God who hears prayer. I don't know how people go through life and never pray to God. What do you do with your burdens? What do you do with your problems? What do you do when you need wisdom? What do you do when you, when you don't know what to do? What would we do if we couldn't pray and know that God answers prayer? I'm thankful He's the God who hears prayers. God, did, God has done amazing things in answer to prayer. We read about in Sunday school, Elijah saw the fire fall from heaven, consumed the sacrifice in answer to prayer. Joshua saw the sun stand still so they could win a battle. Can you imagine that? How did, how did that happen? He asked God to do it. Prayer. Prayer saw Moses part the Red Sea 
and the Israelites went through on dry ground. Prayer delivered Daniel from the lion's den and the three Hebrew children from the fiery furnace. Go out through the Scripture and you'll find time and time again, He's the God who hears and answers prayer. But we have seen God answer prayer here. The RU ministry was started because of prayer and a, and a miraculous answer to prayer. Prayer opened up and sustains the ministry of the Words to Encourage Radio. Prayer allows us to support over 70 missionaries. No wonder, listen, no wonder Jesus said men ought always to pray and not to faint. No wonder the Scripture tells us to pray without ceasing. You see, there, there comes a time when you ought to be saying, listen, I'm not interested in what I can do. I'm interested in seeing what God can do. And, and you won't know what God can do until you pray. And so, I'm thanking God for prayer. Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me, and I'll answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. James says, Oh, you have not, because you ask not. George Mueller fed 2,000 orphans and, and, and countless other school children under his care for many, many years based on a verse in Psalms that says, I'm the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. And George Mueller said, I open my mouth wide and God has filled it. Listen, our prayers, it's, it's not just pray, but then pray. And when you pray, pray big prayers. Nothing's too hard for the Lord. Take it to Him. Thank God He hears and answers prayer. So I'm thanking Him for salvation. I thank Him for prayer. But then I'd like you to go back to the New Testament, to the book of Colossians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, please. Notice with me verse number 6. Colossians 2 and verse number 6. The Bible says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with what? Thanksgiving. Here, I'm thankful and I have thanksgiving that I was taught in the faith. The Bible says here that I had a, uh, as this I received the Lord, I walk in Him. By the way, I received Him by faith, so I walk by faith. And then I'm rooted and built up in Him. You don't get built up till you get rooted. You've got to grow your roots deep and let God establish you in the faith. Establish in the faith, notice, as ye have been taught. You know how you get established in the faith? You let somebody teach you the Word of God. You know how you get established in the faith? Hey, new Christians, you get in the church service Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And you be faithful to the, to the teaching and preaching of God's Word. And your, your roots will begin to grow deep in the things of God. And when that happens, you begin to grow up. And when you begin to grow up and grow out, you begin to influence others with your life. But I'm thanking the Lord as ye have been taught. In fact, what goes along with this is what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 when he told Timothy, Continue thou, verse 14, Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Timothy, be thankful you were taught in the faith. Be thankful you were brought up learning the things of God. Be thankful that, I'm thankful that God placed me in the home that He did. I'm thankful that He placed me in a home with a dad that said, we go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Sunrise, he sets in the west, two plus two is four, water runs downhill, and we go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. That's the way we were brought up. I was, and, and listen, I didn't choose that. God placed me there. 
God put me in that kind of a home. Don't listen, listen, don't you listen to people who say, well, you don't force your kid to go to church, then they won't go when they get older. That's not true. Hey, that trio you heard sing this morning, Bob Reed and his wife Tanya and Andy on this side, you know what? All three of them were brought up in the faith. All those were brought up Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Guess what? They're still in church now. And they're standing up singing the praises of God. So when I come across somebody and say, well, I was forced to go when I was a kid, so now I don't go to church. I, I, I'm, I'm nice to them. I smile at them, but I tell them that's not true. Uh, you, don't, you don't go to church because your heart's wicked and you don't want to go to church. Let's just face it. That's what, that's what it is. I'm not being mean, but I'm telling you the truth. There's, there's too many other. The Bible says you, can, you, you want to be thankful that I was taught in the faith. That I was brought up from a child I've known the Holy Scriptures. I'm thankful for the pastors, uh, Lynn Bessie and a little church in country church in Hartville, Ohio, and Harold Henniger at the Canton Baptist Temple in Mel Sabaka and, and Dr. Hiles and men who faithfully preached and taught the Word of God to me as a young person. I'm thankful they taught me the Bible is the Word of God. I'm glad they taught me that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I'm glad they taught that salvation is only through faith in Jesus Christ alone, plus nothing, minus nothing. It's faith in Jesus Christ. A church doesn't save you. The baptistry doesn't save you. A good life doesn't save you. Trying to do better doesn't save you. There's only one Savior, and it's Jesus Christ. The Savior isn't me. The Savior isn't the church. The Savior isn't you. The Savior is Jesus Christ. And you put your faith in Him. I'm thankful for the men that taught me in the faith. I'm thankful that they grounded me in the Word of God. Some of you ought to be thankful. And listen, uh, sometimes we think, well, I've grown up in church. It's all I've known. Thank God for that. I'm in this room, and don't raise your hand, but there's many in this room who wish you could have been brought up like that. You say, boy, I didn't have those truths when I was growing up. And boy, I wish I would have known growing up what I know now. What a difference it could have made in my life. Why would you want to trade your upbringing and trade the fact that you were taught in the faith? Paul said that's something to be abounding in thanksgiving for. Be taught in the faith. And then I'd like you to look at Philippians chapter 1. Just back of one book from Colossians is the book of Philippians. Notice what Paul says here. In Philippians 1 and verses 3 and 4. Paul said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident in this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you can I say fourth I think we ought to thank God for one another thank God for one another I think it was in Sunday school Terry Lynn mentioned she was thanking the Lord for the godly people that have surrounded her and have been a help to her and encouragement to her that's the that's the benefit of having a church family you know the the commercial what is it that I don't even know what it advertises, but I remember the slogan, membership has its privileges, right? I have no idea what that commercial, and boy, somebody in advertising is shaking their head right now, but um, <laughs> that's, why, that's the way it is with church. Amen. Membership has its privileges, and you get to fellowship with other believers. Now listen, Paul is saying here, every time I kneel to pray for the church at Philippi, I give thanks to God for these people. Now, you remember when he went to Philippi, there were no men. He had the Macedonian call in Acts 16 to come over and help us. And he got there, and I'm sure he's expecting a crowd of people waiting for him to tell us about Jesus. And uh, guess what? There's nobody. He couldn't find anybody. He asked, he asked around. And finally, he said, well, there's some women down by the river. You might check them out. Okay. Went down there, and there were some women that were doing some Jewish ceremonies, and and. Paul preached the gospel to him. And the Bible says the Lord opened the heart of one named Lydia and she received Christ as her Savior. And then several of her household 
were saved. They all got baptized. Maybe when he was praying, maybe he was thinking of Lydia and her household. It wasn't long after that in Philippi. Um, they, they got arrested for preaching. And they got thrown in jail in the innermost prison. And at midnight, after being beaten and placed in stocks, they were praying and singing praises to God. All the prisoners heard them. And a little after midnight or in the wee hours of the morning, God sent an earthquake. And when the earthquake happened, it shook everything. And the Bible says everybody's bands were loosed. Prison doors flew open. Nobody's chained anymore. What do you think would happen to that, Brother Kevin? Huh? I mean, if you think about that and all the doors flung open and everybody was free to get out if they wanted to get out, and guess what? Nobody budged. The jailer came in with a sword and was going to thrust it in himself because if any prisoner escaped, the jailer paid for it with his life. And Paul said, Ho, ho, ho! Don't do yourself any harm. We're all here. How in the world did all those other prisoners stay? The jailer said, Tell me, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? And you know what, you know what Paul told him? Paul said, listen, here's what you do. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Alright? And by the way, that message hasn't changed. You come to me today and say, well, how can I be saved? I would say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So the jailer got saved and then the Bible says he spoke to him the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And that night, he got saved, the Mrs. Jailer got saved, and all the little jailers got saved. And he took them the same hour of the night, and he washed their stripes, and he baptized them. Maybe when he was praying, he was thanking God for that church, maybe he was thinking of the jailer family and their conversion that night. And he thanked God for that family. Maybe there were others in the church who were a great blessing to Paul. In fact, Paul said there were times in his missionary journeys and his establishing churches that nobody communicated with him. And by the way, every missionary understands that. Many missionaries, when they go over to the field, they're on deputation for four years or five years sometimes, and they finally get everything together and they go to a field, and you know what? They go sometimes four months, six months, and never hear from anybody. And they feel like everybody forgot us. Paul knew what that was like. He said, when there were times when no one communicated with me at all except one church. You know who it was? Church at Philippi. Maybe that made him grateful and thankful for this church. Because they communicated with him as far as giving and receiving. He said, time and time again, you sent and met my need. And that made him grateful for the church at Philippi. But you see, he took time to think. And when he took time to think, then he became thankful. Did you ever stop and think about coming into a clean building on Sunday? Where the songbooks aren't strewn all over the place and the papers from the previous service aren't laying around? Gum wrappers on the floor. Fingernail clippings. You say, who clips their fingernails in church? I don't know, but when I find you, we're going to have a talk. <laughs> but you ever think how it's clean? Hmm? And thank God for church cleaners? Hmm? You ever think about those who clean and supply the restrooms? Hmm? You ever think... Take time to think and thank God for those who make sure the bulletin's printed each week. Sunday school lessons are printed. Those who count the offering, write the checks, pay the taxes, send out missionary support, plan and prepare a ladies' meeting, cook the men's breakfast, Keep the missionary apartment clean and prepared for the next guest to come in. Just, just things that is it's kind of an unthankful job because no one ever thinks that somebody did this. 
We just take it for granted that it all will be this way. Hmm? Nursery workers, ushers, junior church workers, Sunday school teachers, nursing home workers, those who several Sundays a month when we have our meal and we go home and get our Sunday afternoon nap, they're in a nursing home singing, ministering to those folks, giving them a Sunday service, letting them know that though other people may have forgotten about them, God hasn't, and they haven't. I thought about last week and really the last several weeks when counting the Spanish flyers, 11,000 flyers got distributed. Nearly 60 people here on Saturday working and getting things set up and cleaning and preparing for the turkey dinner Sunday. You know, I just wanted, I just found myself thanking God that I'm around people who want to work that want to labor for the Lord. Some people who desire to serve the Lord with their life. That's a, that's a wonderful blessing and a wonderful privilege. And I, like Paul, would have to testify that I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Thanksgiving. Thankful for salvation thankful for prayer, thankful for being taught in the faith, thankful for one another. The, the family of God that He's given to us at Bible Baptist Church. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good, He's so good to me. I love Him so, I love Him so, I love Him so, He's so good to me. Father, I bow before you in prayer this morning. Asking you, Lord, to help me to be thankful always. Continually. And I pray that you've spoken to the hearts of people here in the room this morning. That each of us would in everything give thanks that we would cultivate that attitude of gratitude. We would enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Father, today I pray that each one this morning in the room would be able to say, I'm thankful for a great salvation that has been provided for me by God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And if they don't understand what that means and they never, and they really, truly, honestly cannot thank You for that, that they find out what that's all about this morning. That those of us who have that salvation would take time to thank You for the privilege that You hear our prayer. Not, not only can we pray, but that you hear our prayers. And we can know that we can have the petitions we ask of you. Some today ought to bow the knee and say, God, thank you that I've been taught in the faith. And then many today ought to bow the knee and say, God, thank you for other believers in this church family. Their work for you their labor of love, their fellowship in the gospel that we share, for allowing God to work in them that which is pleasing in your sight. 
Make us a thankful people this morning.